The year was 1789, and the Constitution was ratified by all of the states. George Washington was the first president of the United States, followed by Department of State, Thomas Jefferson, Department of Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, and John Adams, his vice president, who was selected after George Washington almost died. Oh, there was also the Attorney General, Edmund Randolph, but no one cares about that guy. Later on, James Madison brought up the Bill of Rights again and wrote the first eight amendments. Next things next, Hamilton enacted a tariff intended to raise revenue. He had two plans. George Washington did not like the first one, but he indeed did go with the second. This is where things get bad. Hamilton proposed the idea of a national bank. Well, Thomas Jefferson, he did not like that. They continued to argue until Thomas Jefferson brought up a very important point. The Tenth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment was strong. The executive branch had the power to create a new entity and let the National Bank happen. Hamilton proposed two new things. A tax on alcohol and a national mint. A way to create money. And Hamilton's plan paid off $21 million in debt. Later on, a man named Citizen Jeanette was sent to the U.S. as an ambassador. He hired men to sink British ships and make it look like it was the U.S. causing trouble. <laughs> but by the year 1793, Washington called for a recall and kicked Jeanette out of the United States. In 1794, John Jay was sent to London to talk with British to get back on good terms. Basically, he was trying to get them to sign a treaty, but they didn't want to. So he secured a pledge of evacuation for the British. They were promised to leave the Western Forts by 1796. So he took the offer. Back home at the US, General Anthony Wayne was sent with 2,600 men into the Northwest Territory battle was known as the Battle of Fallen Tibbers. The U.S. wrecked them and got them to sign a treaty known as the Treaty of Greenville. <laughs> what happened? Why are you fighting? Also in 1794, farmers were refusing to pay taxes because of the tax on alcohol Hamilton had in 1791. George Washington sent Alexander Hamilton and 13,000 men to put a stop to this rebellion. Who wants alcohol back? We do! Who's not gonna pay their taxes? We are! We are. <laughs> the farmers boot ganged, but the 20 men who were found were put on trial. It was now 1796 and Washington decides it's enough. He created the two terms for presidents so that presidents didn't have too much time. Also suggested that the U.S. stay out of war until it becomes more structured and stronger. Thomas Pinckney, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, who no one liked, and John Adams, the winner. Although Jefferson was selected by John Adams as his vice president, they did not get along well because he was a Republican and John Adams did not like political parties. Hamilton continued to talk bad and bully John Adams in the newspaper. John Adams felt very sad and emotional, but luckily he had support by his wife. When it came time to talk about the army, Alexander Hamilton brought up how they should look. John Adams was not taking that. He ripped it up 
and he was showing them that they need to talk about how the army acts, whether how they look. Idiot. Throughout John Adams' presidency, a lot of people disliked him, and he got very frustrated. He decided to fire his cabinet. It just kept getting worse for John Adams. His wife told him that his son, his favorite son, was now an alcoholic. Adams was furious. Towards the end of Adams' presidency, his wife was telling him that he needed to go to his son's funeral. He was not going to go. He was furious. So, his wife left without him, and he stayed there. Until Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States. Brother of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and